Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for worship today. In today's gospel, we will hear the story of Jesus' baptism. You know, in light of all that's happening in the world around us, especially the tragic events that occurred in our nation's capital this past week, this passage comes at a crucial time, a time for us to remember and to be strengthened by God's gifts that we receive in baptism. And not only do we receive these gifts that fortify us, that tell us who we are and whose we are, gifts that bless us, but that we live out that baptismal covenant by going and doing likewise, by seeking reconciliation with one another, by loving one another even when there is great discord, by blessing one another's lives and building one another up. This is the great call of our baptismal covenant. So I'm glad you are here today and I invite you to come along with us and let's see what God has in store for us today. During this time of unrest and violence in our nation, let us pray the prayer for peace found in our Book of Common Prayer. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. For the human family. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and the hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us turn now to the lessons appointed for today. A reading from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. 
God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Acts. When Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. 
and a voice came from heaven, You are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Have you ever known someone that you would describe as a person of very few words? Now, that phrase, that a man or a woman of few words, can mean a lot of different things. It can describe someone who might just not have a whole lot to say. But it can also be a person who has the amazing ability to get their point across while only using a few number of words when they speak. For the record, I have never been described as a person of few words. But Mark, the evangelist for today's gospel passage, was certainly was a person of very few words. His gospel is the shortest gospel, and I think that he is more in the camp of just saying what needs to be said in as few words as possible. I mean, take, for example, the story today about Jesus' baptism. You might have noticed that Mark doesn't spend really very much time at all on the details of the actual baptism itself. As much as he talks about the strange manifestations or occurrences that happened as Jesus came out of the water. Let's listen to it again. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Short, sweet, and to the point. And notice that Jesus doesn't really do or say anything either. He's rather passive in all that is happening to him and around him. According to Mark, he simply receives the gift of the Holy Spirit, the dove descending down upon him, and God's favor that he is called the beloved with whom God is well pleased. So, what's up with all of that? I mean, if there really isn't much to say or much to report about Jesus' baptism, why even report it at all? And what is all the fuss? You know, there are probably more pressing things going on in your life and in the world around us than the need to remember Jesus' baptism, and our own for that matter. So why does it matter? Jesus' baptism was the launching point of his public ministry. Through his baptism, he learned who he is and whose he is. God's beloved, in whom God is well pleased. These are distinct words about acceptance and identity and blessing that will no doubt sustain Jesus and give him strength at various points along his ministry, a ministry that will culminate in his crucifixion and death on a cross. In the same way, for many of us, baptism marks the beginning of our Christian life. And and it matters. It, It matters because we begin this life with these same powerful words. You are my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Words that bless us. Words that tell us who we are and accept us for who we are unconditionally. 
words and promises that continually shape us and from which we can rely on each and every day throughout our lives. And we don't have to do anything or say anything to earn them. They are a free gift. We simply need to receive it. Like Jesus, we are passive recipients of God's blessing and favor. I mean, this is why Jesus' baptism and our baptism is so important. This is what all the fuss is about, that the great gift of baptism is that we become God's beloved children, not because anything that we did to deserve it, but because of who God is, because God made us out of pure love and longs for nothing short than our flourishing. In baptism, God chooses us. In baptism, God says that who we are is enough and that these gifts given to us in baptism can never be taken away from us or lost by us because we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as God's own forever. I think that Mark doesn't spend much time describing Jesus' actual baptismal moments, not because they aren't important, but because baptism is more than the event itself. Throughout our lives, God continues to call us beloved. He continues to bless us and assures us that he is always with us and for us. It might feel at times like there may not be much that we can count on in life. But this, these gifts, these words, this promise, we can rely on. They are like a deep well that we can draw from as we face challenges and heartaches and unease. Like Jesus, we can find great strength and overcome great adversity by remembering that we are God's beloved in whom God is well pleased. In our baptismal covenant, which we will renew in just a few moments, we promise not only to just accept these certainties, but to make them real, to make them present in the world around us. To share them with others, treating everyone we meet with the same love and acceptance and blessing that God treats us. You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased powerful words, words that will shape and strengthen us throughout this new year. They matter more than you might realize. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. 
Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in the joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those here who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Prayers of the People as we recall the waters of baptism today, gather us to your heart. Increase our commitment to the vows we have made to follow you. Give our spiritual leaders wisdom, patience, and guidance. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, Bishop Mauricio and the Diocese of Brasilia, Frank, our rector, and Kathy, our deacon. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Peter's Lebanon, the Reverend Christopher Beasley, and the Reverend Ben Wyatt, Pathways Priest. Pray for God's people and their leaders. As we hear the news of the nations, sharpen our attention to what is happening in the world around us. Compel us to pray for those in authority and for the people they govern, that there may be peace between nations and neighbors. Pray for God's world and all her people. As we build relationships with those with whom we live and work, open our eyes and hearts to your presence in their lives and the ways we can serve you by serving them. Pray for your neighbors and friends. As we see those who suffer in any way, increase our capacity and willingness to love and serve and pray for them. Today, we especially remember Ashley, Brian, Carol, Tori, Dan, Cheryl, Susan, Duke, Eric, Jeff, Stephanie, John, Martha, Joyce, Larry, Libby, Phyllis, Sarah, Steve, Phil, Terry, Mary Ann, Chip, and Bailey. Are there others? Pray for those who are suffering with illness and the struggles of life. As we say goodbye to those who have departed this life, comfort us in our grief and assure us of your love. Today we especially pray for Pray for those who have died. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Almighty God, we ask you to bless this chalk, that it may be a sign of your blessing in the homes of all who will use it. We give you thanks for the beginning of this new year and ask that you keep us all safe and at peace. We pray this through your holy name. Amen. Peace be to this house and to all who dwell within it. A prayer for the beauty of the earth. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation, to the honor and glory of your name, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us lift up our act of reception. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, in this life, 
and in the life to come. Amen. When Jesus went to Jordan stream, his father's will obeying, and was baptized by John there came, a voice from heaven saying, This is my dear beloved Son, upon whom Blessed, praised, hallowed, and adored be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory in heaven and in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. Let us pray the Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me to come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Our prayer of self-dedication. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to thee, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you. And then use us, we pray you, as you will, and always to thy glory and the welfare of thy people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us today. We wish you a most holy and blessed week ahead. Take care.